We're talking about spiritual tools and stress reduction techniques for youth because we're in a crisis and that's what we'll explore next. Um, well, specifically, what we'll talk about is the youth anxiety epidemic requires psi tools. We'll define psi, the psi science of mind power, how to dialogue about reality with kids based on photos. We could start with my answers to kids deep questions in photos. You can make your own booklet. Then we'll talk about how to understand generations Y and Z based on my interviews with thousands of global youth for six books. And then we'll talk about visualization tools for resilience, other stress reduction methods to use with kids, including emotional freedom technique. So uh, let's make the point that kids are in crisis. The 2023 CDC report, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, their report on youth risk behavior found that 57% of high school girls felt persistent sadness or hopelessness in 2021, double the 29% for boys. One in three girls had seriously considered suicide. Wow. And 13% had attempted it. Young people are telling us they're in crisis, concluded Dr. Kathleen Ethler. So the obvious question, why this rise in anxiety and depression? Obviously part is isolation during COVID. Teens don't do well in isolation. And the major emphasis we see in the media is on the harms of social media, which is accurate, but there's more. My interviews with so global youth, they focus on the pressure to succeed and worry about the planetary future, which we're destroying. Uh, another factor that doesn't get talked about enough is sleep deprivation. Over 80% of teens in the US are sleep deprived. And if you're like me, when you're sleep deprived, you're not very cheery. Um, and then this can be a vicious circle because the more social media they watch and participate in, the less sleep they get. Um, so they need tools and Psy is the basis for it. So what's Psy? Um, psy is a Greek letter, refers to the psyche and anomalous events that aren't explained by our normal common sense points of view. Um, in the Institute for Noetic Sciences, Dean Radin's chief science defined psi as non-local consciousness because in the quantum level, there's no space, no time, everything is connected. And this allows psychic phenomena to occur. Radin finds psi applications fit into seven categories, communication and control, healing, intelligence, forecasting the future, archeology, span discovering the past, dowsing to get answers and counseling. This is a picture of my grandson when he, during COVID, he was doing work at home and the sign he's holding says, look for the angels in your life. They're everywhere. Just like that picture. Here's an example of Psy in action. I teach a Zoom energy tools, clairvoyant and healing class. And a student, Corinne, in the class asked me to look at her mother who'd recently passed over. And I told Corinne, I, I saw your mother with a big white standard poodle, which I'd never seen before. And she made it back and said, email and said, that's Sophie, our standard poodle. Mom used to watch her when we went out of town. She loved her. So my feeling was her mom created an image of Sophie for comfort. And then another side example that happened to me recently is I had oral surgery and I was doing my weekly volunteer energy work every Wednesday night. And the young man I was chakra balancing for, he knew I was kind of concerned because it's not something I'd done before. And he said, you know, Carol King's song, Tapestry, is really coming up as important to you in this healing process. We were both mystified. But as I was going under the next day, that's the song they played. So it was reassuring to me, to say the least. 
Um, so how does Psy work? So again, this is the basis of the power of thought, mind power, um, all the tools that we'll be talking about. Um, it's not woo woo, it's based on quantum mechanics. So if you have a team that says, oh, meditation, oh, positive thinking, oh, mantras, no, that's just woo woo. Say, no, actually it's science. And it's the science that's called quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics looks at the small, the world of atoms, molecules, electrons, photons, muons, quarks. And what they found is everything is connected to what could be called, but isn't an information field. Scientists don't know very much about this connector that, that unifies everything. Um, physics tells us that mind influences matter through mere observation. There's a famous double slit experiment where electron photons change whether they're uh, a wave or a particle depending on whether they're observed or not. And our intention influences matter, our emotional connection influences matter. Um, everything is at its base wavy vibration and frequency and we influence that with our thought, which are also frequency and waves. Um, and then another explanation for how anomalous events like ESP work is resonance. The HeartMath Institute found that we're influenced by the earth and the sun's magnetic resonance activity, and we influence the earth's field. We feed it with our thoughts hopefully with heart-centered heart coherence. So the heart math has developed different types of meditation. They all focus on breathing through your heart and focusing on a time when you felt appreciation, love, joy, understanding, success, and just slow your breath and concentrate on that and ask for a solution to whatever's on your mind. Uh, Bill Bengston is an amazing scientist. He cur cures mice who have breast cancer and has cured humans, including himself. And he thinks that his cycling technique, which we won't go into now, uh, works through resonance and information, that the information is received by, let's say, the mice's uh, uh, immune system. And it has to do with future thinking about, I wanna be healed in the future. And he also found that his cycling healing technique can be duplicated in water. And so he had really amazing outcomes with COVID patients in a hospital in Africa. And then another part of the science of Psy is subtle energy anatomy. We can work with the subtlety of our auras, chakras, meridians, nadis, energy systems, and uh, it's important that we know how they work because they're the template for our physical body in our life. Um, here's a photo of my energy field, my aura. And when you're talking with kids, you can present to them the evidence for the power of thought and intention. Um, so here's some of the evidence. Uh, to me, the most amazing thing is people with multiple personalities called disassociative identity disorder. The different alters they're called or subpersonalities have different diseases. Like one can require reading glasses and the other not. One could be allergic to certain medication and the other not. One alter could have diabetes and the other not. So with the personality change, the body changes. I mean, that's huge. Think about that. And along that same line, we know about the power of placebo. If I believe I'm gonna get better because of this little white sugar pill, I do. Harvard professor Ted Kapchuk is working, doing research on placebo. Um, we've probably seen examples of where a hypnotherapist says to someone, this pen is a cigarette and I'm gonna put it on your wrist and the person gets a blister, even though it's just a pen. So what we believe the body responds to. 
and we respond even to little colored bits of light, which are movies on a screen, we get our blood pressure goes up or we cry or we laugh or we get depressed or whatever. There's studies that just thinking about doing something like playing a piano tune or strengthening a muscle that uh, has effect that people who do mental rehearsal have better outcomes than people who don't. And that's just thought. Um, people like Dean Radin and Stephen Schwartz have done research where they take chocolate, tea, wine, something like that. And they divide it in two parts. One part is blessed, the other is left alone. And then they ask people to taste it and see how it affects their mood and how they feel. And statistically significant outcomes are people like the charged chocolate tea or wine better. That's something you can try with your family, with the kids that you work with. And then another evidence for the power of thought is um, a spontaneous remission of terminal diseases. Like people have stage four cancer and they remit. <laughs> uh, and there's the IONS has put together a bibliography on this and Jeffrey Rediger uh, collected interviews with people who experienced spontaneous remission. And he only interviewed people who had research data like x-rays to prove that what they said happened, happened. And he found the unifying theme was that they changed their identity, their perception of themselves which ties into our first point of people with DID, different alters of different illnesses and stuff. Um, pictures are worth a thousand words when you're dealing with kids. So um, I'm gonna put the dog outside. Um, the, you may have heard of Dr. Emoto, who has done research where he takes Tokyo, Tokyo tap water and he charges it like with music or a person or a concept like compassion or wisdom or heavy metal music or you fool. And then he freezes it, slices it and looks at the crystals. And this was criticized for a long time by because it hadn't been replicated, but it has. So water has memory and that's what Bill Bankston was able to use. Um, mind power experiments, You can, these are really fun things to do with young people and grownups too, because they, they see sci in action. Um, so you could do things like experience clairvoyance and ESP, take a big envelope and put pieces of colored paper in it. With your eyes closed, pick one and predict what color it is. You can draw a card from a card deck with your eyes shut and predict, is it red or black? And if you get good at it, is it hearts or spades or whatever? And then as in the Gansfield studies that are widely used, you could take four pictures and a sender in one room focuses on visualizing sending one image to the receiver and then the receiver is relaxed and quiet and all the senses are kind of um, calm, like wearing a blindfold. And then at the end of the experiment, the receiver looks at the four pictures and says, hmm, I think it was number two. And statistical outcomes in Gansfield studies are way above chance of 25%. I've seen up to like 40%. Uh, you can make ESP cards called Zenner cards. You can download them for free online and predict which card you drew or ask that one to come up. Or you can have your partner tell you which one or you have a square or a circle or whatever. And then you can do remote viewing exercise and put something in a bag and ask your people in the experiment, what it is. And the remote viewing, they drew it. That's how they accessed uh, Soviet information during the Cold War. 
So when I hit a um, banana in a paper bag, students said that it was yellow, a little green, smooth, and elongated, which sound like a banana. Uh, telekinesis is mind moving matter. And you may have read Matilda with kids, or we see that happen in the placebo effect or studies of healing intercessory prayer. A lot of them have done been done with um, heart attack patients and like in San Francisco General Hospital. You can throw dice with the intention to get a number or you can throw a, can a coin, I want heads or I want tails, or you can throw it with your eyes shut and see what number it is. Um, you can use your intention to try to bend a candle flame, levitate a toothpick, swirl water in a bowl, separate clouds, put ice cubes in two glasses and concentrate on melting one. And then you can ground or unground. And I'll, I have how to do that on my website. You just visualize like a big tap root from the base of your spine, deep in the earth. Nice deep breath. And when you're grounded, your partner pushes your shoulders a little bit and you won't move. And then when you unground by like walking on a beach in Tahiti, when your partner pushes your shoulders a little bit, you wobble. And then after you've proven to your kid your, or your teen that there, there are anomalous powers that we have and that you can use your mind to create results, even physical ones, then they wanna know what the meaning of life is. Why are we here? So I put together this book, Answers to Kids' Deep Questions and Photos, and you can make use my book or make your own. And um, so it's based on questions. What's God? So the, this, this is, I say, God is patterns in the universe. Look for the spiral in the shell, the rows in our DNA molecules, galaxies, <clears throat> um, and water spoil, spirals down a drain. What other patterns do you see? How do you define God? And then I also answer God is love and show people who love each other. And I really encourage open-ended questions rather than lecturing because none of us listen very long to lectures. Better to ask questions and do experiments. This is another um, example from the book, um, synchronicities, synchronicitously, <laughs> a duck came into my yard when I was thinking about what's real, how do we talk about that? Because our common senses uh, aren't the story of what's reality. Um, like our bodies are mostly 99% empty space. Um, okay, let's turn to a different topic, which is understanding Gen Y and Gen Z. So Generation Y, also called millennials, were born around 1981 to 1996. Then they were followed by Gen Z, 1997 to 2012. And now we have alpha babies. And we're, we'll talk about what's on their minds. And this is based on my interviews and open-ended surveys of over 4,000 youth from 88 countries. And that's one of the books, Global Youth Transforming Our Future. And what they think is what her sign says. We are the leaders we've been waiting for. They're, they're, they're aware of their power. Um, these are some other parts of the series about what's on youth's mind. Brave Young Women's Global Revolution, Volume 1 of 2, Ages in the Youth Studies. That was really interesting because I found doing all this reading about youth studies that the scholars rarely talk to youth and certainly not in open-ended questions. So there's very few quotes from youth. If they talk to them, it's multiple choice, what's your drug use, tobacco use, that kind of thing. So we need to approach youth with respect and ability to listen. Um, so what did I find? Um, this is Gen Y. Um, my favorite question was, 
what question would you ask the wisest person on the planet? And they're philosophical. 22% want to know about the meaning of life. So that's important to think about. They want to understand why we're here. 21% um, asked about the wise person. How'd you get so wise? And 11% more likely to be younger uh, ask questions about science and social science like how big is the universe? And I was surprised that so many 6% wondered what happens after death. So that's something else you may wanna talk about. And there's lots of research about near-death experiences that um, show that there is, the spirit continues after death. And the University of Virginia School of Perceptual Studies has documented case studies of over 2,500 young people who remember their past lives. So you might want to explore that. Um, I ask, what's the purpose of your life? They're altruistic. They want to do good works, worship God or Allah. That was more true for Muslim kids, help their families. Only 10% didn't have a <clears throat> purpose. And their top career goals were altruistic, um, except for business in second place. Medical professional, teacher, do good work, social work, and counseling. Um, I was interested in what bothers them, what causes troubles for them, schoolwork, human nature, their peers. What would you change about adults if you could? They're too bossy and strict. They're too arrogant. They have bad habits like smoking and drinking. They should be more understanding. And they really wanted adults to listen to them. So keep that in mind. I asked when have you felt most loved, which is important. Um, family, especially in difficult times, like when you're sick. And they felt love for successes, like in school or sports. And they felt loved when they felt understood. Um, OK, what about Generation Z? I interviewed 54 climate activists from 31 countries, young ones, and this is in Climate Girls Saving Our World. The, the cover was drawn by one of the climate activists in Britain, and they think Gen Z is powerful because they're informed by the internet, they're more moral, they're more media and tech savvy, and they disrespect elders because we have destroyed the environment. They have jeopardized their future. So they said, you know, here we are spending our teenage years in long meetings and activism, not having fun because we're in jeopardy. Um, and then if you're curious, the, the, this typical activist from around the world is um, firstborn, which was interesting, two thirds of them, optimistic, communicative, wholeheartedly feminist, determined, passionate, caring. And they were often motivated, they said, to take action by girls like Greta Thunberg or their activists or caring parents. Um, and then my most recent Gen Z book is Young Global Changemakers for a Feminist Future. The cover is Agnes Chow, who was a leader in the democracy movement in Hong Kong, which has been stifled as you know, by Beijing, it's really sad. And they insist on self-definition. Um, Maria is a young teacher in Uruguay. She said, we're constantly constructing and deconstructing ourselves. I think that's really the key to Gen Z. Um, they resist traditional socializing forces, including religion, family, and social norms. And none of them emphasize their religion as a key motivation. Um, and what we're finding is that's a pattern around the Western world, that there's an increase in people called nuns, N-O-N-E-S, who are maybe 30% of the US, U.S. population now. They don't have any religious affiliation. It doesn't mean they're not spiritual. It just means that they don't go to church or temple or, or synagogue. Um, so we have a better understanding of Gen Y and Z, how tolerant they are, 
how resistant they are to stereotypes and being defined by others. Um, they want to think for themselves. So that's the way to approach them is through fairness and reason, not through authority. <clears throat> so in my book, Calm, Parents and Children, a guidebook, I list a lot of side tools for staying centered. And let's look at some of those. Um, meditation, everyone knows, is necessary to calm the monkey mind, to find stillness and centeredness. And an easy way is just to focus on our deep breathing. Uh, James Gordon, MD, has done a lot of work with traumatized people, and he advocates soft belly breathing. That's breathe in soft, blow out belly. Or he thinks breathe in, smell the roses, and blow out candles. Some kids suggested that to him. He also advocates reducing stress by shaking, dancing, drawing your feelings, being in nature. Uh, we could add singing as well as dancing. Um, brain gym is important because it they discovered in working with kids with learning disabilities that they get homolateral. And what that means is the right side of the brain is connected to the right side of the body when it should be aligned to the left side. So when we get homolateral, we uh, have the way to solve it, that, that feeling stressed and klutzy and uh, awkward is to do anything bilateral. <clears throat> so the classic bilateral move is the cross crawl. So you touch say right elbow to left knee, left elbow to right knee. And figure eights are a good way to to um, cross the midline. You can doodle figure eights in class or just look at them with your eyes if you're looking at an imaginary lazy eight, they call it in brain gym. Brain gym. Um, and then what, what we're working with is meridians and it's really calming to calm the triple warmer meridian. And one way to do that is to give yourself a hug, one arm on the elbow, the other in your opposite armpit. Breathe. And then switch. And of course, yoga does lots of twisting and movements that, that cross the midline and that are that are calming and centering and get us out of our, our monkey mind. Um, acupressure tapping, uh, emotional freedom technique is one of the most popular approaches. And I have lots of articles on my website about the research and an article on working with kids with EFT. And this is something that you can do in groups. Gary Craig, the founder of EFT, found that we get benefits even when we're tapping for someone else. Um, TAT, tapas acupressure technique, Honomonopono, you can look up or email me and I'll explain. Um, it's a good idea to keep a daily gratitude journal. Professor Robert Emmons at UC Davis found that people who do that, who focus on gratitude uh, have much better outcomes. So what I ask kids, is your glass half full or half empty? So focus on the half full. Uh, you can make a vision board or a movie about your goal, how you want your life to unfold, because we know where thoughts go, energy follows. So we want to uh, create a positive template around us. Um, a, a, we know that doing volunteer work is a good remedy for depression, it makes us happy to help other people. So at dinner time, discuss every night, what kind thing did you do today? What fun thing did you do? What did you learn? And um, you could take turns listening to each member of your household. One couple that I interviewed does what they call the pen game. And they pass around a pen like a talking stick in some rituals. So when you get the pen, you speak and no one interrupts you. 
Um, and of course, we know it's really important to limit media and um, isolation of kids. There's an article in the resource list at the end about um, how to use energy psychology in limiting social media for children. But bottom line, there's gotta be limits. <clears throat> um, another tool is how do we achieve our goals? Like to be calm and centered and happy and do well in school. Um, you can get a balloon or imagine one and blow your goal into it. Like I have a test coming up and I wanna feel really calm and connected when I do the test, remember what I know. And then imagine filling the balloon 100% with amusement, 100% with enthusiasm. And then imagine your fairy godmother drives up in her coach and uses her wand to fill the balloon with gold miracle dust. And then turn the balloon into helium and send it on its way to the goal. Um, the instructions for how to do this and other basic tools are in my Essential Energy Tools book. Um, Cindy Dale says, imagine streams of sunlight charging your goal. So you could add streams of sunlight to your balloon and ask your young person, how do you experience these streams of sunlight? And you can ask invisible helpers like an angel or religious icon like the Buddha or Jesus or Mary to help. You can charge or what she calls enchant a rock and use that to connect you to your helping healer. And you can also send what she calls healing streams of grace to help others. Do an experiment with that. Um, I, in my workshops, do a visualization to achieve a goal of unexpected money. And one woman got $300,000, no, no $30,000 in unexpected insurance payment that she didn't know anything about. I have lots of stories like that, but that's for later. Um, this is a CD that I did called Kids Mind Power, fun visualizations for kids and the inner child and adults. And these are drawn from Louis Bostwick, who founded the Berkeley Psychic Institute and didn't write about his tools, which are really effective. So I wrote about them. Um, to ground, you can think of a, a like a taproot, as I said, or a drain pipe, um, big cord, um, and attach it from the base of your spine down deep in the earth. And you can use it to feel strong and you can use it to release. So anything that's bothering you, there's nothing you can do about it. Release it down the grounding pipe. To center, imagine a room in the center of your head. Obviously this is imaginary. Uh, you decorate it You can create windows with great views. Uh, put a throne in there, imagine sitting in it. And the reason this is centering is it's a way to align with the sixth chakra. They, people call it the third eye between the eyebrow. And um, whenever you feel upset, you can just think deep breath, touch between your eyebrows, be in the room in the center of my head, be in my throne, feet on the ground, look at my great views. Ooh, there's a mountain meadow with a little bubbling brook, wildflowers. Um, to energize you and your goals, you can imagine a gold sun over your head and stand up into it, feel it hug you, tickle you, or imagine it opening up, filled with goodness, filling your head, going across your shoulders, down your arms, filling your torso. Filling your abdominal area, going down through thighs, knees, calves, and feet. We need to have clear boundaries, especially when we're around lots of people. Um, so you imagine something like flowers. I know boys I work with do baseball 
mitts. Girls might do that too. Uh, someone use sea sponges. Um, just imagine that all the way around your energy field, your bio field is something that absorbs other people's energy. And when they get kind of filled up, you blow them up with your intention and create new ones. Um, another kind of healing technique, imagine a little gold sun or bubble in your hand, fill it with happy healing energy from the earth or the stars or Cindy Dale's healing beams of grace and send it to the person you wanna give a blessing to, including you. Um, let's say you want an answer to a question. You can do the heart math, breathing in your heart, tuning into a time of deep gratitude, or you can go to that room in the center of your head and imagine you have a screen in front of you, like a video screen, and ask for a, like a video clip to show you the answer or to hear it or know it, depending on your modality. Um, you can also play with a, a, a pendulum and, and make sure that before you pay any attention to it, you test to make sure you're not homolateral. And the way you test is you say your name. So my name is Gail. I should test strong. My name is Minnie Mouse. I should test weak. Okay, so I can go ahead and pay attention to it. And muscle test. Um, there's different ways. Here's two. You make an O-ring with the thumb and first finger of one hand and then try to break through with the other. And another way is to take your dominant pointer finger and press with the middle finger. My name is Gail. My name is Minnie Mouse. Um, so you have to make sure that you're centered and uh, bilateral before you pay attention to the answer because things can get switched. So we've kind of scratched the surface. What are other resources? Look at www.gailkimball.info and look under resources for parents and children. And then we've talked about some of my books. There's Cosmic Kids Yoga, um, parentingchaos.com forward slash mindfulness, relaxation books, kids. Um, the Eden Method, Five Elements for Children. It tells how to work with kids who have different types. Um, there's energypsych.org, strategies to manage screen times with kids. Um, in terms of books, Deepak Chopra wrote The Seven Spiritual Laws for Parents. His daughter, Malika, wrote a book for kids, Just Breathe, Meditation, Mindfulness, Movement, and More. Uh, there's Finding Your Calm, a mindful approach to relieve anxiety and grow your bravery. The Mindful Kid and Mindful Games. Anxious Kids, Anxious Parents, Transforming Stress for Teens. The Spiritual Child, uh, Reiki Meditation, Children's Manual. Meditation for Children, and um, the other, the rest of the uh, resources are on the website under resources for parents and children. And that is the end. <laughs>